Good morning. Good morning. We are glad you are with us this morning. If you will, stand with me. Let's start this morning by singing page 359. This is the day. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. That is such a reminder to all of us. This is the day the Lord has made. I, I told the group this morning, you know, it's chaotic and anarchy and everything we've heard about in our country, things that are going on in our streets. Uh, but I walked outside this morning and the sky was blue and the birds were chirping and the sun was shining and you just realize that God's still on his throne. And he's in control and we're just going to keep worshiping and praising him because surely he's worthy today. It's good to see all of you here this morning. We had a record crowd in the 9 o'clock service this morning. Uh, I told them we only done that twice, and we had three more today than we did last Sunday. So record-breaking crowd. Amen. So anyway, uh, and I'm not sure about that in here, but we got a good group. We appreciate all of you being here. If you're visiting with us, you're an honored guest. We thank God for you coming and being a part of this service. We praise the Lord for you. Uh, several announcements that I want to get to before we get started. Uh, let me see. I got on the wrong side there. Um, we are partnering with LifeShare uh, uh, to do a blood drive here at the church June the 27th. That's on a Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. So anybody that would be interested in giving blood, you know my sister, y'all heard my story. I, uh, my sister was in a terrible car accident when I was, or well, my mama was seven months pregnant with me. And so I, she's been messed up all my life uh, from that wreck. She's paralyzed and uh, 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 has mental disabilities and everything uh, from the wreck. And it's been that way my entire life. And I worked at a store one time. <laughs> they were going to have a blood drive. And I'd never given blood before. And there was a lady that had worked at that old store for 30-something years. Uh, and I told them, I said, I just don't think I can give blood. I don't want them uh, putting that needle in me and all of that. And she said, you know, I felt the same way when your sister had her wreck. They had her a blood drive. And that was the first time I gave blood. And I said, well, what do you do now? you got to give blood now, right? Uh, and so, and then I found out they give you a cookie, and <laughs> done deal, baby. I was in there, and so <laughs> I've been giving blood ever since. But just move, stick it to me, baby. <laughs> give me my uh, zebra cake or whatever it is. <laughs> anyway, so uh, you come give blood, and they'll give you something for it. I guarantee you. So, anyway, who's that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. And so get with you to make an appointment, right? Right. Okay. And the number to the church office is in your bulletin. Check that out. If you didn't get a bulletin, they're on the desk there in the foyer. Grab one of those on your way out. You can get in touch with Miss Tiffany, and she will get you in the schedule there. So anyway, that'll be a, that'll be a good call. It'll be a blessing to do that. Uh, we're going to go back this Wednesday night to uh, services here at the church. Now, what we're going to do Wednesday night, our adult group that always meets in the sanctuary, we've traditionally sat in the back few pews, had a podium back there. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to do this. I'll be up here. Mike will be on. That'll give you plenty of room to spread out. Uh, you don't have to sit right up on top of each other because we usually pack those back five or six pews on, on Wednesday nights. And, you know, that'd be real tight. So we're going to spread out. I'll be up here uh, as far as I can get from you. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Uh, We'll be up here and doing our thing. We want you to come Wednesday night. Uh, I, I just feel wholeheartedly we need as much Bible as we can get right now. And so Wednesday night, we're going to be back on at 630. So you be here for that. Our kids, I've talked to all of our kids' leaders, our youth, junior youth, RAs, GAs, and we will have a nursery. So bring them on. We're 
going to have them all separated. We've got 10 different people working uh, in all those groups all together, and we're going to trust their discretion. They're going to do their best to, to, to help them get along. So it's going to be good. So we're going we're to get back to normal on Wednesday nights, and I'm going to tell you what, I, I love Wednesday night services here at Antioch, and so we're going to have a big time with that. So you be sure and come Wednesday night at 630. Uh, we will continue this Sunday morning program, 9 a.m. for the older group, 55 and up. 11 a.m. for your group, the under 55 group. There are some kind of on either side of that thing going either way. That's fine. Uh, uh, we want people to be at church, and so uh, whatever you feel best about, uh, you do that. We're definitely doing that through the month of June. It turns out there's some folks that are really enjoying that 9 a.m. service. We might go on with that the rest of the summer. I don't know exactly how we're going to do, uh, uh, but you just stay with us, and we'll keep you informed on all of that. Uh, all right, back, let me get back to this before I mess up. Did you have something? Okay, okay. Um, the, we're doing the annual offering for the Louisiana Baptist Children's Home. That'll be June the 21st, which is Father's Day. We'll receive that offering that day. Uh, also, the prayer list is out of date. If you have something you'd like to add or change, somebody needs to come off, let us know. Uh, again, that number in the bulletin to the office you can call during the week, and we'll get that taken care of, or let Tiffany or I know, and we'll get that settled. Um, also, we are planning tentatively now. This is not a... a a for sure plan yet, but we're planning tentatively uh, for homecoming building dedication the first Sunday in July. And I say tentative only in case something changes uh, as far as the progression that we're on, everybody getting better and everything getting better. So we're planning on that, so be praying with us about that. We'll dedicate the building that day and, and celebrate our 121st anniversary as a church. Um, Brother Patrick and Miss Melody's group is going to be going to a junior youth camp at Bethany, uh, Louisiana, the conference center there, the 27th through the 31st of July. If you need more information on that, Brother Patrick's number is in the bulletin. You can call him. On Saturday, August the 1st, we're having a one-day Bible school here at the church. Uh, we're going to do a Saturday, and we're going to do 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. We'll have class. 11 to 12, we'll have lunch. 12 to 3, we're going to have fun. So we're excited about that. So be praying with us uh, that we'll be able to make an impact and reach some kids. Uh, and we always have good Bible schools around here. Any other announcement? <laughs> yes, sir. That sounds good. That'll be good. Be praying about that too. About Amen. All right. I don't think there's any other announcements. If there is, all right. If not, let me let me read you a few cards that we've got here today. Uh, this one says, "Thank you so much for allowing uh, my family the use of the fellowship hall uh, and, and for lunch during Bobby's funeral uh, there at Antioch Cemetery. Um, your kindness during this difficult time will always be remembered. Sincerely, Jane Smith Green." So. We appreciate that card and, and continue to pray for Miss Jane. Uh, this was said, David and I would like to thank our church family for the calls, food, prayers, and monetary gifts we received during and after his knee surgery. It is such a blessing to be a part of the Antioch Baptist Church. Brother David and Miss Tammy Eubanks, thank you so much for that. Amen. Um, and then got this one here. It says, Antioch Baptist Church family, thank you for the gift card and devotion books that you gave us for graduation. We appreciate the love and support of our church family during this special time. Uh, love, Anna Grace, and Grant Michelle. Amen. We appreciate that. Proud of these kids and, and adults and whatever you want to call them. It's amazing. All right. No other announcement. Now, y'all can't let that old crowd at 9 o'clock be livelier than you are in here at 11. So if you're glad to be here, say amen. 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 Now, let's have church. Let's get over all that other stuff and have church. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, we love you. We thank you today for loving us. What a privilege it is to be able to come to the house of God. Bless our people today. Lord, we stand in need as, as, as a thirsty land of an outpouring of your love and your presence. Have your way in this service today. Do what only you can do, and we'll give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. With the new, with the new remodel, we got a couple of ambient mics up here in the ceiling that pick y'all up. It's not playing in here, but you can hear it on the recording. We're going to, he's giving me the thumbs up. He can hear it, so... 
we did that so that the recording would sound better and people could hear y'all, could hear the amens, hear y'all sing. So y'all uh, show off this morning. Let's sing page 406, The Solid Rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide its face, Rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant, His blood support me in the whelming flood. sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Soon dissolve like snow. The 
by faith alone, sign unknown, and yet his eyes were watching me. The Though the sails are torn, I have fallen on my knees as I face the raging seas. The anchor holds in spite of the storm.
If you have your Bibles this morning, open to the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, where we'll be, Proverbs chapter 4. Thank you, Brother Ross. Good song service, wonderful special. What a message in this time. Someone said in the early service that Ross could have sang that song and given an invitation. I said, well, thank you for the compliment on my preaching. <laughs> oh, that was great. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bible, Proverbs 4. When you find it, could we stand together as we honor the word of the Lord? If you don't have any hindrances there. Proverbs 4. We're going to start in verse 13. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness, and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is in the shining light, that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. I want to use this passage of scripture, and I want to preach a message to you this morning, titled, The Way of the Righteous in the Day of the Wicked. The Way of the Righteous in the Day of the Wicked. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We thank you today and give you honor and glory for the privilege we have to be in your house and in your service. Thank you for this good crowd, and I pray that you'll bless each one that's come out today to worship you. Lord, there's so much going on in this world. God, I'm thankful that there's still one sure thing. And I pray today that we'd hold high your word. And we might receive it. Uh, and Lord, we'd honor it and we'd obey it. Lord, I pray you'd have your way today. If there's a lost person here, that they'd be saved, that saved people be challenged. And God, we'd just get closer to you. And we'd leave here better off because of our experience in church this morning. Lord, have your way. Magnify your name. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, and you can be seated. Naturalists tell of an invisible line, real, definite, unchangeably fixed at a given altitude above sea level, known as the snake line. The snake line. We're told that this certain mountainous area in New England, one of the first questions that somebody uh, uh, is there to maybe purchase a farm will ask a question like this of whoever's offering to sell this place, is it above or below the snake line? Below that line, there may be deadly reptiles uh, that would be uh, imperiling to man and beast. Uh, above that line, no man can live, or no snake can live, rather. Uh, below that line, an unsuspecting child or an unwary adult might fall victim to one of these deadly snakes. And above that line, uh, they may move about untroubled and in security. Uh, the upper altitude is kept securely, not by visible defenses or man-made barriers, but by an immutable mandate of the living God, dating back to the creation of the reptile world in which God said in effect, much like he did to the waves that Job recorded, hitherto shalt thou come, but no further. Security is purely a matter of altitude. You can pitch your camp below the snake line and take chance of dealing with the deadly viper, or you can pitch your camp above the snake line and know that you'll forever be safe. Now where we don't have in this world a place of altitude that we can get to, to protect us from the poison and venom of our enemy. There is a place that we can go spiritually, that we know that we'll have protection. A place that we can go in our relationship and service to the Lord, that we know He'll keep His people. A place, if you will, above the snake line, that we can go there and we can trust Him. And we can live our lives, much as we said for our title today, on the way of the righteous. In the day of the wicked. Now you're, you're not ignorant to the fact that our country is in a very critical situation. There is chaos and anarchy in our streets. There is trouble everywhere we turn. If it wasn't one thing, it's another. We were in a pandemic. And from the pandemic, we went into a nationwide crisis. From the crisis now, it's hurricane season. Amen. <laughs> And so we ask ourselves this question, and I'd like to challenge you around this thought. What is the role of the church? What is our purpose amid all of this chaos? 
How do we respond to what's going on in our world? What should the role of the church be? And where I don't have an influence necessarily in any other church or in any other denomination or group, I, I do have the privilege to pastor this one. And so I just want to preach specifically to us this morning and ask us that question. What is our role and how do we live above the snake line? How do we live in an atmosphere of danger and chaos and corruption and yet maintain the qualities of the people who are right with God, washed in the blood of the Lamb? Well, I believe Solomon eloquently describes how we can live for righteousness in a day of wickedness. How we, if you will, per the illustration, can live our lives and function and perform as a church above the snake line. Even though we're in this day of, of, of turmoil and chaos, I want you to know that there should still be a rock of security in the lives of people. I, I love what Brother Ross sang this morning about the anchor holes. And the story goes, the author of the song was holding his newborn child as he was removed from life support and the baby died in his arms. And he wrote the words to that song, The Anchor Holds. There is a passage, I believe it's in Hebrews chapter 4, that Paul talks about we have in Jesus an anchor of hope, a sure anchor beyond the veil. See, when Jesus saved you, or saved you, if you are saved today, He anchored your identity in the presence of God. And, and though the ship gets battered, and, and though the chain may be stretched, we can rejoice this morning because the anchor holds. And we know that God and our place in God is not kept by our ability. And our place in God this morning is not kept by our decisions. And our place in God this morning is not kept by our good deeds. But our place in God this morning is kept by none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. By His own precious blood. He planted our anchor within the veil in the presence of God. And I want you to know this morning, as the song so wonderfully put it, the anchor holds. And so how do we, a people who are anchored in God through Jesus Christ, how can we walk in righteousness in the day of wickedness? How can we maintain the security of living above the snake line even though we've been called to persevere among the snakes? We do exactly as the Word of God tells us. Now you know when I build a sermon, I'll put together my points and I am, I am a... a, 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 a a person who enjoys a nice, alliterated, expository outline. That's just my style. That's what I enjoy. As I read the text, Solomon put the wording together so well that I couldn't undo it and use my own phrasing. I just borrowed his words for our points this morning as we look to the message. So if you'll look with me there in verse 13, I want you to think about this. Listen to what he says. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Very easily and simply put, number one, take instruction. What do we do in this day of chaos, this day of anarchy, this day of turmoil, this day that has been characterized by hate, this day that we have people bringing pallet loads of bricks into our cities and leaving them there for the crazies of the world to throw at buildings that have been built and helped this country to prosper. What do we do at this time as the people of the living God? How do we live above that snake line and do what God wants us to do amid all of this chaos? Because I want to remind you, the devil wants nothing more than to distract you and to discourage you and to pull you into his grip so that we can run around as crazy as the rest of the world is. What do we do? Take instruction. This word, this phrasing that he uses, take, listen to what he says, take fast hold of instruction. Y'all ever played spoons? <laughs> you put them spoons on the table, you got ten people, nine spoons. And I don't remember the game, but you go around with the cards, and when you get the right card, you take fast hold <laughs> of the spoon. Now, I told them earlier, I, I never have been too swift on my feet. I never had real, uh, I'm built more for torque than I am top end. You know what I'm saying? Anybody picking up what I'm putting down? But I've always had pretty good hands, pretty quick hands. And so, buddy, I'm, I, will, I will beat you down at spoons. Bring it on if you want some. We'll put on rubber gloves and masks and play spoons like a bunch of morons. Right? <laughs> we'll get in there and play spoons. I'm taking your spoon. You're out of here. So, 
That thought of taking fast hold, grabbing a hold of that spoon, taking a hold of this instruction from the Lord. Listen, there's never been a time that we needed to hear from God more than we do right now. And all the devil wants you to do, and listen to me, he, he wants you to stay fixed on the media, the social media, the news media, and let them keep force feeding you all of this information, all of this stuff, anything to keep you from God. And you'll get discouraged. Lord, tell me, I, I can turn it on for 30 minutes. It's the most discouraging mess you've ever heard. It's crazy. And like I said this morning, I, I've prayed, and I'll be honest with you, I called on some men to pray for me last night. I just felt the burden of us being back at church, and I don't want to just ceremonial be back at church. I want to be back at church. Amen? If we're going to be here, we better have church. And, and we're, 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 we're slow, but we're getting there. And I asked some men to pray for me. Pastors, missionaries, evangelists. I said, I'll pray for you, you pray for me. Pray for our church, pray for me, pray for our singing, our preaching. Just, just ask, ask God to help us. And they did, and boy did He. And I walked outside this morning, and that sky was so blue, and that sun was so bright, and there were squirrels running around the yard, and there were birds chirping, and I thought, you know what? You've heard this expression, God's got this. God's got this. I love the old verse that we used a few weeks back, quoted again last Sunday, that I've been young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. We have no reason or excuse to run around and act scared or afraid or to be moved or distracted. We don't owe anything to this world for them to have control of our emotion and to dictate how we perform. We've got to get above the snake line. We've got to walk in a day of wickedness in the way of righteousness and do what God's called us to do. Brother Reuben, how do we do that? Take instruction. 2 Timothy 2.15, the Bible says that we ought to study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth that we ought to turn to the word of God. And it's not just enough to read it. It's not just enough to hear it. It's not just enough to know it. We've got to do it. We've got to obey it. We've got to trust it. We've got to believe it. And if it works, we've got to repeat it. Amen? And we've got to go out and tell the world what He's telling us here. Take fast hold of instruction. Listen to how He words this. Let her not go. Let her not go. Don't turn loose of instruction. Keep her, for she is thy life. Hold to this instruction. Hold to this word of truth. And don't run and don't turn and don't delay. Do what God says do. Take instruction, number one. In verse 14 through verse 17, listen to what he says. Avoid wickedness. Avoid wickedness. How do we stay above the snake line? Well, we're not talking about an altitude this morning. But we're talking about an ability and an authority that's given to the people of God. To walk in the midst of sin. To walk in the depths of this world. And to do something for God. To live right in a wicked day. To guard ourselves and protect ourselves. Listen to how he writes this. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Go not into the way of evil men. Alright, you want your second point? We said number one, we used his words, take instruction. Number two, avoid wickedness. Listen to verse 15. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it. And pass away. Boy, what strong words he uses here. He's talking about wickedness and the workings of evil people. What does he say? Avoid it at all costs. We don't have any business fighting like the world fights. We don't have to get in this like them. We don't throw mud. Amen? We don't argue. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities and against the powers and rulers of darkness that have ascended into high places. We have to fight our fight the way God wants us to fight, and that's by getting on our knees. We don't have to fight the devil. We've got somebody that's fighting him for us, and he's winning. Amen. And I've read the rest of it. He go, <laughs> he go win. <laughs> and whoever's attached to him is going to win too. So why should we be discouraged? Why are we on the defense? I'm going to build my church on this rock and the gates of hell won't prevail against it. Gates are the defense. We're on offense. We're to be going forward. We're to be advancing the cause. We're to be pre... And there's nothing about situation or circumstance that changes our duty. <laughs> nothing relieves us. Nothing detours us. We're anchored in the solid rock. So what do we do? We live 
in the paths of righteousness in a day of wickedness because God has not changed His mind about His church. So we do what God's called us to do. And we do it the way God called us to do it. Fearlessly. We bow our necks and we walk out of here and we do what God has told us to do because He didn't tell us to back up when things got ugly. He didn't tell us to slow down when it got discouraging. He didn't tell us to fortify walls and hide between them. He told us to go on, Christian soldier, and wave high the banner of the Lord Jesus Christ, preach the stuff, live by it, and do what God's called us to do. How do we do this? We do it by taking instruction, and we do it by avoiding wickedness. The writer here knows, you nor I have the ability to dabble with wickedness and come out the victor. So what do we do? Stay away from it. Don't involve yourself in it. We cannot keep going to places we know we don't belong. Doing things we know we're not supposed to do. What is it about Christian people that want to see just how much they can do for the world and still call themselves the Lord's? What is it about us that are satisfied with just doing enough to be able to say we're a Christian and six days out of the week, and most people six days and 23 hours out of the week, See, when we had to suspend services, it blew some people's Christian testimony because the only resemblance of Christ you had was for 55 to 65 minutes on Sunday. Hello. Get quiet on me now. There ought to be more than that in your life. There ought to be something about Jesus that shines in you and through you more than an hour on Sunday. This is not here. We're not here to, to, to be your only cause for Christ. We're here to try to pour gas for a, a day a week on your flame so you can keep going. Living for Jesus and doing what God called you to do. Avoid this wickedness. Why? Because Peter said it in 1 Peter 5 8. The devil's a roaring lion. See, it's not just you and me, and it's not just the world and the wickedness. There's a devil involved here, and he wants to kill you. And he wants to kill your marriage. And he wants to kill this church. And he wants to kill your kids. And he wants to kill your testimony. And he wants to kill that youth group. And he wants to kill this junior youth and them kids. He wants to kill that old folks group that we preached to this morning. He wants to kill the song service. He wants to kill the preaching. He'd love this thing to be dead as a hammer. Come in here and give a little spiritual pep talk, wave a pom-pom, and send you out of here no better and unchanged. That's not what we're about. We came here to stand on the stuff, man. To do what God's called us to do. And for us to do it, and do it right. We've got to take instruction and avoid wickedness. We've got to steer clear of it. Do you hear what he said? When he said avoid it, he said avoid it basically at all costs. Don't even pass by it. Don't even pass by it. <laughs> Go the other way. Get away from it. Don't pass by it. Go away from it and pass away. Go the other direction. Don't have anything to do with it. Why? Because there's a devil. And he knows your weakness. He knows your temptation. He knows what it takes to lure you in. And you know what? We've believed this for too long. That the devil's a little old red-suited man with horns on his head and a forked tail and a pitchfork. And he's running around rah, trying to scare everybody. That ain't the devil. The Bible says he's beautiful. Cunning. Sharp. Subtle. Sneaky. Adam and Eve's in the garden, loving life. Good. God gave them a paradise. Perfect. Perfect health. They're just having them a time. And you know what the devil did? He caught old Eve over there by that tree. The one that God said don't eat off of. And he said, you ought to have some of that fruit. She said, I can't have that fruit. If I eat that fruit, I'll die. He said, no, you won't. And then he put some, he put some seasoning on it. He said, if you'll just eat that fruit, God knows you'll gain the gift of perfect knowledge. And then you'll be just like God. Boy, that sounded good. So she had a bite. <laughs> and then Adam had a bite. And here we are. Thousands of years later in the mess we're in. Because the Bible instructs us knowing that it's not just right and wrong in me and you. But there's a motivator out there. An instigator, if you will. An agitator. And he's busy. In the book of Job, 
The Bible says that God was in heaven being God. And here came the devil and his angels. And God asked the devil, what have you been doing? And you remember what he said? I've been walking to and fro in the earth. It's the same terminology that Peter used in 1 Peter 5, 8 when he said that the devil's like a roaring lion walking to and fro, seeking out whom he can devour. Devour is not a good word. <laughs> but that's what the devil wants for you. That's what he wants for our country. That's what he wants for this church. He wants to devour us. So he puts a little salt and a little seasoning on the sin. And it makes it look like more than just disobedience. He makes it look good. And he makes it look appealing. Why? Because as long as we're above the snake line, he can't touch us. <laughs> but if He can get us, if He can lure us and bring us down and get us into that realm of wickedness, then He knows that He can affect us. And He knows that He can infect us. And He's ruining people, even God's people, every day by getting them down and dragging them into that place of wickedness so that He can devour them. Thank God if you're saved, He can't touch your soul. But partner, He can ruin your life. And he's working hard, doing everything he can. So what does Solomon say? How do we walk in the way of righteousness in this day of wickedness? We've got to take instruction and we've got to avoid wickedness. We've got to run from it at all costs. Listen to verse 16. For they sleep not, except they've done mischief, and their sleep's taken away unless they cause some to fall. Who's he talking about? The minions of the devil. The wicked men. Those evildoers. Their only goal is to hurt you. Their only goal is destruction. Their only goal is to have a negative effect on somebody. You tell me how there could be an injustice and be a tragedy and the answer to it is hooligans throwing rocks through buildings. You tell me how that answers the question. You tell me how that solves the problem. There is a spirit of wickedness in our country. And it knows no boundary, no race, no culture, no creed. It infects all of us. And it's in all of us. And it wants to hurt and do harm and destroy others. I've seen it in the church. I've seen people get as ugly and nasty and bitter as anybody. We throw stones at people out there, but it's just as ugly in here if we don't guard ourselves, take instruction, and avoid wickedness. I've heard of churches that had fist fights on the floor of the church during a business meeting. Not talking about all the, we won't talk about all of them. I'm talking about all of us. <laughs> the devil gets in here and we fall below that snake line and he pummels us, makes a fool out of us. There could be a thousand good sermons preached in that church. Let them have one fight and that community will never forget it. Never remember a word of them sermons. <laughs> so, how do we walk in that way of righteousness in the day of wickedness? We've got to get above the snake line, take instruction. Avoid wickedness. And listen to what else he says. After he talks about those people. And you've known people like this. The only thing that made them happy was hurting somebody else. Well, I'd like to... Stay above the snake line, Rube. <laughs> Keep it up, boy. <sighs> Verse 18. So the words we borrowed. Take instruction, number one. Avoid wickedness, number two. And in verse 18, listen to what he says. But the path of the just is the shining light. And he says that that light shines more and more unto the perfect day. I'll be honest with you. Those last two words touched my heart. You remember this old song? There's a great day coming. A great day coming. There's a great day coming by and by. Isn't it good to know? This ain't it. Isn't it good to know there's something else? Boy, that'll keep you going. If you know there's something coming. There's going to be a day where there's no more fighting. There's no more unrest. There's no more sickness or separation. There's going to be a day coming where Jesus is the light and we're therein. But until then, what do we do? Number three, we've got to stay the path. Stay the course. He says to us in verse 18, the path of the just is a shining light. That means in the midst of all this chaos, poisonous serpents raining down on us, our world 
fractured at the core. But there's a shining light along the path of righteousness for the people of God. Keep walking. Keep going. And hear what else he says. That it shines more and more under that perfect day. That you'll never take a step on an unlit path as a child of God if you do what God's told you to do. Circumstance does not change our course. We've got a work to do. We've got a gospel to preach. We've got a group to persuade. We've got a God to please. We have got to keep doing what God's told us to do, not in light of the circumstances, but in spite of the circumstances. We don't just shout Jesus when things are good, when our health is right, when there's money in the bank, when all is well. We shout Jesus in the downtime. That's how we know we believe. When we keep worshiping, we can't let them steal our shout. Amen. We've let them muffle it, but we can't let them have it. We've got to keep praising. We've got to keep worshiping. We've got to keep preaching. We've got to keep doing what God called us to do because there is a path and it's shining. It's lit. And we've got to stay on that lighted path. We've got to stay above that snake line. We've got to stay out of the realm of wickedness and walk on the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for Thou art with me. We go do what God has called us to do. I don't know if you remember this story or not. I don't know a lot of you don't know who Jerry Clower is. I was out in the lake one time and we were feeling around for a catfish hole. Me and my nephew, he's 15. We was feeling around, couldn't find it. Had that stick trying to find our hole. And I looked at him, I said, we look like Ray Charles out here walking around with these sticks. And he kind of went, <laughs> I thought a second, I said, you don't know who Ray Charles is, do you? He said, no, I don't. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> anyway, so then I started singing Ray Charles for the rest of the day. Uh, <clears throat> Marcel Ledbetter worked at Angola. They had a convict escape and swam across the Mississippi River or got across there somehow and they got out there the hounds took him right to the bank and the guy standing out there with a big old spotlight shining across that river and he said, this is where he crossed right here. One of them looked at Marcel and said, you know what, that light is bright enough and strong enough you could probably walk across that beam of light and get to the other side. Marcel looked at him and said, you ain't going to get me to walk out there on that light. He said, you don't think that light would hold you up? He said, no, I'm sure it would hold me up. I'm scared I'd get halfway out there and one of y'all would cut it off. <laughs> we got to walk the lighted path. It might not always seem easy. There's something about our nature. You know what our nature is? You ever raise two kids at the same time? Our nature is if you get hit, you hit back. Our nature is you spit in my eye, I'll spit in yours. You steal my cereal, I'll steal yours. <laughs> right? That's our nature. That's not the nature of our Lord. Jesus said if a man... Slaps you in the cheek, you give him the other cheek. If he compels you to go with him a mile, you go with him too. If he goes to the law and sues you for your coat, give him your coat and your cloak also. That is where the expression came from, kill him with kindness. As Peter's in the garden, Jesus is getting arrested. Peter said, Lord, I'll die with you, go to jail with you, I'll do it all. Here they come. Peter draws his sword. He pulls that baby out. He was a fisherman, but not a swordsman. He goes to chop a man's head off and all he got was his ear. I bet that was a weird feeling. Jesus rebukes Peter. We don't fight like they fight. We're not of the world. He sheathes his sword and then Jesus goes over and heals the man's ear that had come to arrest him that Peter had just cut off. We don't fight like the world fights because we don't have to. Because there's one that's fighting for us. There's one that's fighting for us that's so powerful that he took a rock in the hand of a teenager and buried it in the skull of a nine-foot giant, and he dropped dead in his tracks. That's my God, and that's who I'm here to serve. Church, take instruction. Avoid wickedness and stay the course. we got to do what God's called us to do. We don't have time to waste. We can't be distracted, depressed discouraged nor detoured we have a job to do and that is to walk that lighted path until that perfect day and then we'll understand it better all by and by y'all bow with me father we love you
And God, we thank you today that you love us. God, that you care for your people. I know that this is a day of uncertainty. But we don't have to be afraid. Because you're with us. I pray that you would speak peace into the hearts of your people. Lord, there's a lot of things in this world that we like and we want, but we don't need. But there is one thing that we do need, and that's you. And I pray that as we understand how necessary you are in our life, that we will, through that, receive all the things that come with you. Your truth, your peace, your patience, your love, your devotion. Help us to be a people that could only be explained by the character of our God. Forgive us of our shortcoming. Enable us in the gospel to be the people you put us on this earth to be. God, as we have this, this time of response and reflection on your word, I pray you'd give us grace to make the decisions that would be pleasing to you and most beneficial to us that we might leave here the people that you'd have us to be. Bless this invitation. Your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Nobody's going to talk or look around as we play. We don't, we don't give formal altar calls in this current situation, but we'd be remiss not to have an invitation. I want to ask you where you are right now as we talk about that perfect day. Are you ready for that day? Because that day's coming. And if you don't know Christ today, that's not going to be a good day for you. It's going to be an awful day. And a, and a situation you'll never escape. But Jesus Christ has made us a way.